Here's the Kyle Lowry history we'll remember, all-star point guard for the NBA champion Toronto Raptors. Beloved, heroic, successful, the greatest Raptor ever. That label is a matter of public record. But if I told you, or honestly Kyle Lowry, any of these things around, say, 2012, you'd probably look at me like this. This Kyle Lowry is the version Toronto will always love, but he is the composite of many prior, very different versions. Let's meet them in the prism. In May 2013, the Toronto Raptors hired a new general manager, reigning executive of the year, Masai Ujiri. Ujiri had already heard plenty about his new point guard. Kyle Lowry had been a Raptor for just one year, but he carried a reputation dating back to before he entered the league. He had an attitude. Granted, Lowry had shaken off labels before. Lowry's jump shot worried some scouts coming out of Villanova, a big reason, along with health concerns, that he fell to Memphis with the 24th pick in the 2006 NBA draft. The Grizzlies moved on from him pretty quickly, for reasons we'll get into. But with his second team, the Houston Rockets, Lowry worked hard to fix his jumper, blasting up to a 38% mark from three-point range in his breakout 2010-2011 season. Yeah, Kyle Lowry used to be a genuinely bad shooter. It was like he became Ray Allen overnight. And yet the Rockets felt compelled to ditch Lowry too, which illuminates the biggest label following Kyle into his late 20s, the part Masai Ujiri heard about before he took the Raptors job. Lowry was praised for his bruising bulldog style on the court, but he could be a bit of a bulldog off the court too. When he was coming up in North Philly, scouts called Kyle uncoachable and unreachable. At Villanova, Coach Jay Wright said his point guard had problems with authority. He didn't always trust the guys in charge, and it showed. If you ask Kyle, he'll tell you where he's from, nobody trusted anybody. The sleazy process of basketball recruiting only heightened his suspicions. Especially at moments of instability, changes in authority, Lowry tended to bristle. When a Villanova assistant left the program, Lowry held a grudge against him for years. In Memphis, Lowry had four head coaches in just two years. The third one, Mark Ivoroni, developed some rapport with the point guard and played him over the more hyped Mike Conley Jr. for a long stretch of Lowry's third year as a pro. But midway through that season, a grisly slump begot yet another coaching change, and the newly promoted boss, Lionel Hollins, preferred Conley to Lowry. Lowry had no beef with the player. He and Conley were close friends, but he clashed hard with Hollins. Rumors cast the 22-year-old Lowry as a bad influence in the locker room, and the Grizzlies dealt him to Houston at the 09 trade deadline, mere weeks into Hollins' coaching tenure. That's a pretty unceremonious boot for a recent first-round pick. Lowry's Houston career began in a backup role, but he bonded with Coach Rick Adelman, a player-friendly leader who let Kyle be himself. In 2010-2011, starting point guard Aaron Brooks missed time with an injury, and Lowry got to showcase that refined jumper. Lowry earned some votes for most improved player and looked like Houston's point guard of the future, but the Rockets fell just short of the 2011 playoffs. Despite protest from players like Lowry, GM Daryl Morey fired Adelman. Lowry yet again got off on a horrible foot with a new coach, Kevin McHale. McHale employed a stricter style, and he came to prefer a different young Houston point guard, Goran Dragic. Kyle didn't help matters. Lowry had reinforced those rumors of a bad attitude by attacking a referee during the 2011 lockout. And when the lockout ended, Lowry's relationship with McHale created problems in the locker room. Everyone noticed when McHale tugged an argumentative Lowry back into a huddle late in the season. Everyone heard Kyle say it would be tough to keep playing for McHale and that he'd have to head elsewhere if the coach remained. Kyle admits now that he just didn't understand McHale's philosophy, that he was immature, and that he took his displeasure with Adelman's firing out on the replacement. Lowry wasn't willing to adjust, so the Rockets traded him to Toronto for just a bench player and a pick. 
The man who would become the greatest Raptor ever, who would bring a championship to Toronto, arrived there in 2012 already eager to leave. He didn't want to waste his prime years as a backup on a team that coveted Steve Nash as their starter. Even after Toronto failed to snag Nash, things didn't look good for Kyle. Lowry showed up to his first camp out of shape, then hurt his foot early in the season. In absentia, Lowry surrendered his starting spot to Jose Calderon, with whom Raps coach Dwayne Casey was much more comfortable. Casey only made Lowry the regular starter after Calderon got traded. If you told this Kyle Lowry to stick it out in Toronto, he knows what he would have said. Kiss my ass. He intended to play out his contract, then get out of town. But heading into the final year of Lowry's deal, along came Masai Ujiri. Ujiri told Lowry his attitude was something in his control. Fixing it, just like he fixed his jumper, could make him a star. Lowry's agent connected him with Chauncey Billups, another late-blooming point guard who joined the chorus of people urging Lowry not to waste opportunity. Let yourself be coached. Channel the bulldog in the right direction. Lowry took this all to heart. Still, right after Ujiri dealt Lowry some hard truths, the GM very nearly dealt Lowry. Toronto all but agreed to trade Kyle to New York before Knicks owner James Dolan shot it down. Instead, Toronto traded away Rudy Gay, who'd been their top offensive option and a friend of Lowry's. The Raptors now belong to Lowry and his backcourt mate, DeMar DeRozan. Without the threat of someone taking his job, without a sudden coaching change, and with better preparation and health, Kyle Lowry flourished. 2013-14 was the best scoring, best passing, best outside shooting season of his career to that point. When it concluded, he and Ujiri struck a deal once unthinkable, a four-year, $48 million contract extension. And 2014-15 marked the first of six straight seasons Lowry made the All-Star team. That's an unprecedented run of recognition for someone who didn't debut until age 28. Over subsequent years, Lowry developed a wonderful brotherly connection with his fellow All-Star, DeRozan. Sorry, I just really wanted to show you this photo. Kyle's health factored into his rise too. He shook off another label. Concerns about Lowry's body had sunk his draft status. A broken wrist foreshortened his rookie year. An untimely, frightening infection accelerated his demotion with Kevin McHale's Rockets. Lowry had begun his first Raptors season hurt and out of shape. Even during All-Star years, late season soreness sometimes affected Lowry's playoff performance. Some of that's just bad luck, but this Lowry weathered chatter about his injuries and his fitness. He got fed up. In 2015, Lowry trimmed his physique with a new diet and training regimen. He absolutely blew away the people who had been calling him a bulldog for unflattering reasons. And more important, Lowry stayed healthy enough to pilot the Raptors to their first deep playoff run in 2016. But on that note, we are still not describing Kyle Lowry in his ultimate form as lovable champion and Raptor legend. To reach that point, he would have to adapt in a way he absolutely hadn't as a Grizzly or Rocket. After all that individual excellence and success alongside DeRozan and Coach Casey, this Kyle Lowry received a familiar jolt. The Raptors hadn't met mounting playoff expectations. In 2014, Toronto blew a first round lead against the Nets. In Game 7, Kyle had his series-winning attempt blocked by Paul Pierce. It's blocked by Pierce, and the Nets win the series! Dreadful finish to a dreadful performance. The Wizards swept Toronto in 2015. Then LeBron James and the Cavaliers eliminated Toronto in each of the next three postseasons. 2018 was Toronto's winningest regular season ever, but the Cavs ripped their hearts out in the second round. After five seasons orbiting the same core, Ujiri decided to make changes, painful ones. Here came the great test, 
the most potent version of a phenomenon that had derailed Lowry's stints with two prior teams. Dwayne Casey, by far the longest tenured coach of Lowry's pro career, got fired right before he was named Coach of the Year. DeMar DeRozan, Lowry's best friend, got traded to San Antonio as part of a package for the Spurs' disgruntled superstar, Kawhi Leonard. Kyle seemed once more like he would bristle at a shift in leadership, that in all but the steadiest of circumstances, he remained unreachable. Kyle did not mince words when asked about losing DeRozan. I felt betrayed because he felt betrayed because that's my guy, that's my best friend. So yeah, I felt some type of way. He blew off questions about the newcomer, Leonard. I don't know. You don't know if you spoke to him? No. I don't know if I spoke to him. Asked about his relationship with Ujiri, Lowry sounded cold. To me, it's, I go my hair and do my job. He does his job, I do my job, right? That's what you do. That's where you guys stand. That's where we stand. Kyle wasn't picking up his phone for new coach Nick Nurse. We know how this goes for these versions of Kyle Lowry. Once the season starts, he clashes with the coach and grumbles himself out of town. Maybe he gets hurt, too. But here, despite the early signs, this Kyle Lowry made it work. In camp, he got a feel for Kawhi and couldn't help but be impressed. Lowry came to appreciate and absorb the even-keeled personalities of his new co-star and coach. Perhaps Kyle had learned from his friction with Kevin McHale in Houston. Granted, Coach Nurse wasn't McHale. The head coach made sure his point guard still felt like he had some power and some authority. On the floor, Kyle Lowry presented a new version of himself. His most productive passing season by far a degree of consistent hard work that astonished his coach. And thanks to good health, good circumstances, and very good luck, this Kyle Lowry delivered the city of Toronto its first ever NBA championship in 2019. Who knows if we'd ever get this Kyle Lowry without first watching these versions of Kyle Lowry. Who knows if he could have broken through sooner or how one more fork in the road could have denied this outcome entirely. All we know is that we got here. This guy, that guy, all these prior understandings of Kyle Lowry amounted to the icon we all know now, a champion, the greatest Toronto Raptor ever. Thanks for watching Prism. If you want to see more episodes of this series where we untangle the legacies of famous and infamous athletes, check them out here and don't forget to subscribe.